Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. This week we're back in the greenhouse. It's time to start bumping stuff up. Now we did a video a couple weeks ago about how we started like uh, uh, brassicas, coal crops like cabbage and kohlrabi and broccoli, plus a bunch of herbs in a slotted tray. So I thought I'd do just a quick video this week and just show you the bump up process. These guys um, kind of been a little bit under the low light situation here. So I want to get them bumped up before they get too much more leggy. Uh, they haven't put out their first true leaves yet, but they actually are uh, to the point where um, they really need to get you know some root development and get out of the slotted tray. Now, the herbs are just starting to come up, so we really haven't seen too many of these yet, but we do have oregano and um, thyme. We've got two types of thyme. Uh, they're coming up as well as the cilantro and the lemongrass and the chervil is also starting to show these are really small seeds So they're very small plants. We'll put a couple of pictures in here to kind of show you what we're looking at um, We haven't seen anything yet on the stevia, but I think that just takes longer in general and the marjoram is also a little slow, but they are uh, doing okay and we'll as soon as we transplant the the coal crops into our six packs We'll put the herbs back on the, uh, the heat mat to kind of continue the process of germination. So let me show you what these guys look like. Okay, so what you're looking at here is, is this is the kohlrabi. It seemed to be one of the, the biggest uh, on the cauliflower. Both of these guys did really well. I've already transplanted the cabbage, which uh, over here in the six packs over here, you can kind of see they look a little floppy. They always look like they're really standing up nice and straight in the slotted tray, but uh, once you get them, you know, away from each other and they kind of get a little bit floppy, but they'll perk up in a day or so. And then the weakest guys over here, or I should say smallest, not really the weakest, but the smallest are the broccolis. Now, what I use just to get stuff out of the tray is really pretty simple. I'm just using, like I'm going to plant cauliflower next, and what I'm doing is I'm planting roughly about... Uh, three six packs of each uh, and to bump up it's really kind of a simple process you just kind of get the 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 knife in underneath in the slotted tray and then I just need to kind of lift up now once I kind of lift that up I can get it with my hand and basically at this point I can start tearing the uh, the the plants into individuals and get them into the actual uh, six pack itself so let's just kind of take an example here. We've got, you can kind of see, here's two plants, and we'll just kind of put these guys into the six pack itself. All right, so the plants, their roots at this point are really actually kind of small. So if we can just kind of, what I kind of do is just kind of tease things apart, and you can kind of start to see some of the small roots. Hopefully that'll focus in. Um, and I'll just make certain that I get these guys into the individual holes itself. So how I'm lining these things up in the tray, I've got labels that I did for each of the slots on the tray, and I'm just going to reuse those labels to put into the actual, um, like I'll put the cabbage label here and the cauliflower label here, so I know that three back from the label is, is the actual uh, plant themselves. So I just use my finger to kind of you'll get a, a deep enough transplant hole and just kind of like I'm using uh, I mean, here's another great example you can kind of see the roots on these guys and it's just a real simple uh, matter of kind of teasing them apart there at this stage it, it kind of sets them back a little bit but not terribly too much because they're pretty young plants so I don't want to really rip on them but even if I get them down to just like just a few a little bit of soil left with some root on it that's good enough and then I just get them in all the roots tucked into the hole make sure I got them kind of tamped down and it's in good enough shape to uh, stand up on its own and that's it that's really the whole the whole secret of this thing uh, make sure you get all the roots into the into the uh, six pack itself now once I get these guys this tray filled out the uh, next thing I'm going to start doing is uh, I'll water these guys in good today. I'm not going to put them back on the heat mat. I'm going to let them kind of grow 
uh, and and kind of um, get adapted to uh, growing a little bit cooler because these are brassicas. They don't really need any heat after germination. So we'll get these guys watered and then we'll set them uh, where they can get some light and then I'll start fertilizing them uh, with the Jadam liquid fertilizer, uh, the grass-based fertilizer on a one to um, uh, roughly, uh, I'll use a one to uh, 100 basis of that and just put that in the watering once I hit these guys at least once, once every seven days or so with that. And that's about it from a fertilization standpoint. So I'm going to be moving a lot of these things down to my propagation house, which gets a little bit more natural light. And uh, there's no heat down there, but these guys don't need heat at this point. But we we'll use like a fabric cloth to keep, you know, to protect against if there's any kind of freezing temperatures. And that way these guys can just kind of grow on and uh, get to the point where we're ready to put these in the ground. I'm thinking with the coal crops, uh, they'll probably grow on about a month. Uh, maybe we'll see how it goes if they start growing faster, but I'm kind of targeting to get these guys in the ground. Today's uh, right around the 19th of um, February. So I'll be probably putting these things in the ground sometime around the first, uh, right around the first of spring. And that's, that's about it. Any of the extras, sometimes you get a few of them like uh, in the cabbage, you know, realm that they're a little bit deformed. I'm not going to bother with those guys. I just set them aside. Uh, so the slotted tray really worked out pretty well. I mean, it was easy enough to keep things damp. Uh, and we've got these guys um, kind of make sure that now, now we can make sure that every cell in the six pack uh, has a plant in it which, which is, uh, kind of keeping you from, you know, having some duds sometimes. If you direct seed into a cell with only one seed, there's always the shot that you might, you might've missed, uh, a cell or you might've had a dead seed or something of that nature. So on such a small scale like this that we're doing, I don't, I can't afford to have duds. So I want to make certain that I've got every single one of my um, six pack cells has a plant in it. And that's, I th think the advantage of the slotted tray is really kind of allows you to kind of take advantage of that. And it's an easier way to do it. You don't have to use a slotted tray. I've seen people use like little uh, plastic, um, uh, like the trays mushrooms come in or something of that nature, you know, from the grocery store, just punch some holes in the bottom. You can get the same effect. Just something where you can seed, you know, these smaller seeds and in, in, in a larger mass that, you know, you can prick out and, and plant up. They look, like I said, they look like they've been really kind of beat around, but in a day or so they'll perk up and they'll be just growing straight. And that's about it. So pretty short video today. I just got a bunch of these guys to do. I got the brassicas to do. I got to I do do the same thing. If you remember the multi-seeded lettuce, we're going to bump those guys up too. And that way we make certain that we have more than enough lettuce and spinach uh, to, to, to uh, start out our season. And that is all there is to it today. So that's all there is about to it and today. And, and it's just a matter of, you know, kind of keep it going. The mix we used in, in these six pack trays is the same mix that we used when we were seeding the onions, uh, where we took some of the uh, down to earth potting mix, but you could use any good organic potting mix. It's got some verma, verma cast in it and uh, it, came, it came that way. And so we used that with a little extra perlite in it to give a little bit better aeration. And that's, that's essentially it. We're filling six, six packs the same way we did when we planted the onions and planted the peas and all the other things. It's basically the same. It's just a matter of, of you know, we're looking at doing these kinds of things. Instead of using a lot of seed in an individual six pack, we tried out the slotted tray and it really worked out pretty well. Where can you get a slotted tray? Probably what you're going to need to do is go to like a nursery supply place. Now there are some online, like, like um, 
I think there is something called Mega Greenhouse. Don't quote me on this. But if you do a Google search, you can find greenhouse supply places that sell uh, a lot of this stuff. Sometimes you can find it with seed companies. They kind of have a sideline of things, but usually a lot of their stuff is just straightforward um, plug trays or, or um, that sort of thing. So just kind of do a, you know, a bit of a Google search and try to find a, the best you can. If I can find a source, I'll link it into our Amazon store. I'm not trying to promote that. I'm just saying we'll put it in there so it'll be easier to find if you want to find it. So thanks for watching today. And as always, stay safe. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.